Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? I hope you're all doing well. Uh, there only seems to be a few of us in class today, so let me go ahead and take our attendance. I'll just do it by uh, your you being signed in. So let's find Chelsea it's here. Let's do Caitlin Yang. Here, Sally. Here, and Uma. Here. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, let's turn on our cameras, please. Good morning, Uma. Good morning, Sally. Chelsea, Caitlin, are you with us? Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning. All right, taking a look at our um, learning plan, I'm seeing for our B-Day, we have balancing nuclear reactions, uh, nuclear decay, gizmo, but the focus is essentially balancing nuclear reactions. Uh, I did get uh, some emails regarding nuclear reactions and asking for some help on that. Uh, I wanna go back to our warm up on nuclear reactions. <laughs> and go over a couple of these problems with you guys. So in last class, we looked at um, the, and by last class, I mean not yesterday, the day before. Oh, and I apologize about yesterday. Um, I wasn't able to come in. I got into a car accident. I'm okay, but uh, my car is a little messed up. So we'll just have to wait till next week before I have a workable car. Um, so let's look at some of those practice problems that we had. Let me get a whiteboard up and then I'll share my screen with you guys. I would appreciate it if uh, you guys can just chime in whenever you can uh, asking questions so that way I can help you along as we're working through these problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our last class, we did the first two problems, um, which are here. Let me make that a little smaller. Okay, these were the first two problems. I'm going to move these out of the way. Oops. Uh, let's just grab a new board. All right. And what I'm going to look at right now is this third problem, which is right here. This is the problem that we're going to focus on today. Does anyone have any questions or any suggestions before we do this problem? All right, if not, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Move this out of the way. There we go. All right, so this problem says that we have a potassium uh, atom and the potassium atom has a mass of 42. And we have this potassium atom 
and that potassium atom is breaking down into okay we have an electron and we have go and we have a uh, some unknown right so Caitlin what's the first thing we need to do Find how many electrons K has. How many electrons? Yeah. Somebody want to help out? Uma, are we looking for electrons with potassium? Uh, we are looking for the atomic group, the atomic number. Right, and the atomic number is made up of what? Comes from what? What part of the atom? The protons. The protons, good. So how many protons does potassium have? Uh, Caitlin? 19. That is correct. So we have our 19. Excellent. Uh, Sally, what do we do next? Um, I'm not sure. All right. Um, so I'll tell you this one, but Sally, you're going to do the next one, okay? So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at the, uh, the top, which gives us our masses, okay? So in this one, we have a atomic mass of 42. Instead of, oops, excuse me, instead of using the arrow, we're going to use a equal sign. And if you're not sure about this, I need you to be taking notes on this right now. Okay, this arrow now becomes an equal sign because we're doing the math for this. So 42 equals zero plus, so zero plus what equals 42, uh, Sally? 42. Good job. So the mass of whatever it is we're trying to solve for has a, uh, has a mass of 42. Now, Sally, you're going to do the same thing at the bottom. So you tell me, what do I need to do? 19 equals 0 plus 19. Where'd you get the 0 from? Oh, uh, no, wait. Negative 1. Good. Plus 20. Good job, Sally. So now we have the atomic number and we also have the atomic mass for whatever it is that we're trying to solve for. Sally, what is the identity of our mystery element? Um, Take a look at your periodic table. Okay. And you're looking for an element that has the atomic number of 20. Now the mass may or may not be correct. And the reason being is because it can be an isotope of that element. But what can't be different is the atomic number. So the atomic number must be 20. So what element has the atomic number 20? Um, calcium. Good job, Sally. All right, does anyone have any questions on this problem? All right, Uma, it looks like you're copying it down, so I'm gonna leave it up for a second, and I'll give you guys a second in order to uh, take a look at it, digest it, and ask any questions you may have.
All right, does anyone have any questions? All right, is there one that you would like me to do specifically? Guys, can you please help me by participating? You can say no, it's okay. I just need some participation. No. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on to number 15. Okay, we're no longer doing this one. We're done there. And we're doing this one now. Okay. So this question says, we have an element that has a mass of 210. The symbol for this element is PO. It's breaking down into a, an element that has a mass of 206, has the symbol PB, and there's something else that's created. We need to know what that something else is. So Caitlin, what is the mass of an element that has the uh, symbol PO? Could you, could you repeat that one more time? Sure. What is the uh, atomic number for an element that has the symbol PO? A84. PO is, in fact, 84. So we have an 84 here. Good job. Uh, Sally, what do I need to do next? Um, is it like 210 equals, is that like how I'm, what I'm supposed to do? Or? Okay. So 210 equals, equals what? Um, four plus 206. Equals what? Four plus 206. You say four. Well, where's the four coming from? I don't see four down here. Uh, oh. So I'm looking. Is it 84? Well, look right here. You see where I put this mm -hmm. colorful line? Mm -hmm. That's where gathering your information okay. from first. So okay. I think you got your, uh, what is it? 110 came from here. Your equal sign came from here. What goes next? 206. Good job. So you have your 206. You have your plus sign. And then what plus 206 gives you 210? Four. Excellent. Good job, Sally. OK, what do I do next, Sally? Um. 84. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Equals. Mm-hmm. Um, is, do I put a zero? Mm. Or? Is the atomic number for an element with the symbol PB, that's lead, um, is the atomic number for PB zero? Uh, no. Mm, what is it? 82. Aha! So we put an A2 here. And now what do I do? Equals 82 plus 2. Excellent. 82 plus, so what plus 82 equals uh, 84? That's going to be 2. 
So I put a two here. And let me go with Uma. Uma, what in the world has a atomic number with, uh, two? Helium. Excellent. And he said it with such confidence. Thank you, Uma. Sally, you did an excellent job with this problem. Good job. Are you feeling more confident with this? Yeah. Good. You should. You did an excellent job. Very proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So we've completed number 15. Let's go ahead and move on from 15. Let's take a look at 16. 16 set up a little bit differently, uh, but it's still a problem that we can solve so long as we follow the same steps. Okay. So it's, it has a, a slightly different setup, but the way in which we go about solving it is exactly the same. So allow me a second to write down, oh wow, I have a whole lot more color options. Interesting, did not know that. Okay, so we're starting off with, we don't know what we have. Whatever it is, is breaking down into two components. The first one is going to be an alpha particle, which has a mass of four and an atomic number of two. It looks just like a helium atom because in fact, hey, it is a helium atom. Plus, we have something that has a mass of 231, and it has an atomic number of 90, which means that it has 90 protons, and the only element that has 90 protons, it has the symbol TH. There we go. I don't really like how my nine is looking, so I'm gonna try and clean it up so you guys don't judge me too much. Yeah, it looks a little better. Okay. Caitlin, can you help us out with this one? What should I do first? Add the, the mass. Okay, so let's add the masses. How should I do that? Four plus 231. Four plus? 231. Okay, and what do I do now? Add them together over here? Yeah. Okay, so I have 235. So just for the sake of making everything look a little cleaner, I'm gonna add them, but I'm just gonna put it over here. So this is 235. So whatever this is, it has a mass of 235. Okay. Uh, Uma, what do I do next? You should add together the um, atomic numbers of both elements. elements. Excellent, excellent. So I have 90 plus two, which is gonna give me 92. And our resident periodic table expert, Sally, is gonna go ahead and tell us what, um, what do you call this, uh, what element that is. Uranium. Say again. Uranium. Excellent job, Sally. Y'all are doing great with this. Good job. All right, does anyone have any questions yet? Is there something that you're struggling with, something you weren't sure on, anything where you were like, hey, I got it, and then you were trying to follow along and said, wait a minute, maybe not. All right, if not, I'm gonna leave these uh, last couple ones for you to practice. And let's go down here to it's similar problems, just 
a different way of expressing them, okay? So I'm gonna box this off and let's go to a different problem. Box you off, zoom in a little bit, all right. So this one says, the electron capture of dyspor dysporium 147. Well, the first thing I noticed is that this element that we're talking about is in a uh, hyphen notation. So how do I write that in hyphen notation? Let's go with Uma. You would write it by using the mass given um, in the hyphen notation, and then you would look to the periodic table to find the atomic number, and you would write it like that. Okay, okay. So what I do, here we go, 147, because that's my mass. Uh, what is the symbol for dysporium? I don't know this one offhand either, so I always look it up if I don't know them. Mm. All right, there we go. Number 66. Mm -mm -mm. Looking on atomic. Periodic table of elements. Dysporium is looks like dy. So 66 is the atomic number. dy is going to be the actual symbol. Now, when it comes to electron capture, I want you guys to look in your notes and tell me what electron capture is going to look like. Is dysporium breaking down and releasing? A, uh, a beta particle, or is it dysporium plus a beta particle that's going to give me a new element? Take a look at your notes. Good morning, Avery. Um, I had a question for the quick check. Okay. Uh, help us to solve this problem, and I'll be happy to answer your question. Okay. All right. So, Avery, we're trying to look at electron capture, and we are curious as to what the setup should look like. So, we're looking at 
uh, this problem right here. It says the electron capture of dysporosium 197. Um, what should that look like? What does that reaction look like? So we have our dysporosium right here. Should we be adding an electron or should we be breaking down dysporosium and releasing an electron? It would be minus one electron. So we should be writing it as minus one electron. Like, yeah. Avery? Um, I think so. Oh, Avery, can you check your notes to verify to make sure you're right? Uh, Uma, have you been able to find it in your notes? It should be plus um, negative one electron. plus an electron, okay? So note that this is an electron capture. Uh, Uma, can you actually, since, well, Uma, you're the only one with your camera on right now. Can you help me out? Uh, sure. Do you have a pen and a pencil or something that you can grab in your hand? All right, put them up to the camera. Okay, great. So you have a pen and a piece of paper. So the paper being the larger of the two is gonna be our, uh, what is it called? Dysphorsium. And we want to capture a pen. So Uma, can you show us, show like capturing a pen? Okay, good. oh, that's perfect, great Uma. So she captures the pen in the dysphorsium, right? To make our new element. So in order for the dysporosium to capture the um, electron or that beta particle, we had to add them together, okay? If you were to write it the other way, I'll do that in red. Thank you very much, Uma. We would have our dysporosium 147, 66, dy, and this shows that dysporosium itself is breaking down to give you something else, right? But there's gonna be a beta particle that's released. It's no longer with the dysporosium. The dysporosium has released this, okay? It's going somewhere else. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Can you guys turn on your cameras, please? Does that make sense to everybody? Good, 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 thank you. All right, so whenever you have a problem that's talking about a capture, the focal point is that we are capturing it, we're, we're adding it to whatever it is that we have, right? So now that we're adding this together, uh, Avery, how do I solve this problem? What is my new element? Would be 47 on top and then the 65 on the bottom. Wait, wait, Avery. The first question is how do I solve this? Oh. You would do the math between the two numbers. Okay, so tell me what to do. It would be 47 and then plus zero, which would be 47. So it's 147 plus the zero that you got from right here equals 147. Okay, thank you. Let me move this down some. Okay, 147. So whatever this is, it has a mass of 147. And then I have my bottom numbers, which are 66 plus negative one 
equals, and what does 66 plus negative one equal? 65. 65, and what has the atomic number 65? Anybody? Wait, are you asking about, wait, can you repeat what you asked? I asked what has, what uh, element has the atomic number 65? Terbium. Say again. Terbium, I believe. TB, yes. Yep. Thank you. And that's our answer. All right, Avery, you came on and you had a specific question. What was your question? Um, on the quick check, um, it gave me partial credit, but the and for the thing, so I wasn't sure what I was doing wrong. Okay, uh, let me go here to grades. All right, let's go to Avery. And which quick check is it? Uh, 2.4. 2.4, okay. And let's go to speed grader. And we're looking specifically for Avery. Avery Pascal. All right. Uh, which number? Um, the question four. Question four. Determine the mass number, the atomic number, and the symbol for the element formed when platinum-179 emits a positron. Ooh, great, we were just doing a problem like this. Okay, let me share my screen and preferably sharing my screen without showing Avery's work. Right, Avery? All right, everyone can see my whiteboard, but not Avery's screen, correct? Avery's work. Awesome, good, thank you. All right, here we go. So the question asks, to determine the mass of the and the atomic number and the symbol of the element formed when platinum 179, so let us, here we go. What is the, well, we know the mass, so the mass is 179. What's the symbol for platinum? Avery, do you have the symbol for platinum? Is it T? Say again. P T. Yep. P T is platinum. Uh, Sally, can you find us the atomic number for platinum? PT is in fact 78. Good job. And platinum emits a positron. So, Caitlin, should we be doing a plus or should we be doing an arrow? Which one? So, what's Bye. Say again, Kaden. Minus. We're doing a minus. 
the question is whether to do the plus or the arrow. We're writing out the equation. Oh, uh, we're doing an arrow. arrow? Yeah. Yes, arrow. the arrow is correct. Because it's admitting, it's releasing, it's letting go of. So we need to make sure that we mark it as letting go of. Okay. So use our arrow to label that. And it's releasing a positron. So a positron has no mass. It has a positive charge of one and it we use the E. So what element goes here? How would I solve this? Let's start with Caitlin. When you subtract the 78 from 1. Okay, so let's go down here. I have 78 equals 1 plus something. I don't know what that is. So minus 1 from both sides. If I minus 1 from both sides, now I have... Uh, 78 minus 1 equals whatever my answer is. 78 minus 1 is 77 equals my blank space. So my blank space is 77. So down here, my atomic number is 77. And how do I solve for the mass, Avery? Just add zero and 179. So I have 179 equals zero plus something. Don't know what that is. Well, zero plus whatever is going to be the number. So it's 179. So whatever I'm looking at has a mass of 179 and has the atomic number 77. Avery, what has the atomic number of 77? Avery? Would it have the symbol of IR? IR is correct. All right, do you see where you went wrong? All right. So apply the same uh, knowledge for any other questions like that. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? All right, guys, uh, you do have a test coming up, like, tomorrow. So please make sure you're checking your learning plan consistently on a regular basis. Um, please ask questions. So take a look at your notes uh, right now. See if there's something that you're unclear about that I could possibly answer for you and help you with.
Hello, guys. Anybody have questions? No. Is there something you want me to go over? Do you feel confident? Do you feel like you're gonna master this? Like you've mastered it and that you're ready for your test? Yes. Okay. I saw Uma uh, shake her head. Sally had a verbal yes. Avery, how are you feeling? I don't know about that one, Avery. It was like, eh, yeah, kind of. Um, do you want me to go over some more of those uh, hyphen notation problems? No, I think I got it. Okay. What do you think your um, your mistake was, or where where there was an error or some confusion? Um, I accidentally added the one from the electron. Mm, okay. But you had your equation in the right order and everything? Caitlin, how are you feeling? Okay, I guess. Okay. How can we make you feel really confident? What can we go over to, to make you feel like really strong in this area. Okay. Um, do you feel like you understand how to set up the nuclear notation problems? The word problems? Like in the QC? Mm -hmm. I would like some help. Oh, absolutely. Happy to help you. All right, so let's go back to the QC. And I will do another problem from the QC. Let's look at number six, okay? And I'll share my screen with you guys. Uh, do you want me to, I think I might be able to copy and paste the actual question onto the screen. So that way you can read it if you want to. Um, let me see, I think there's a post-it note, yep. So, I'm going to go over to this post-it note. Let me, I'll share my screen with you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Share. And I'm going to take this question. Hopefully that doesn't come over. Paste. All right, let's see if I can make this bigger. There we go. So the question was determine the determine the mass mass number and that's a blank. Okay, the atomic number that's actually a blank, and the symbol that's also a blank of the element. Let's see if we can make this a little bigger. No, 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 I need it. I'm gonna try and get all of this so you see everything. Select all tags. Good. Copy, paste, and oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Of the element form uh, during the decay of tungsten 165. All right, let's do this problem. 
So we have tungsten 165. Caitlin, what's the mass of tungsten 165? 165. Absolutely. So we have the mass is 165. What's the uh, symbol for tungsten? And then we need to find the um, atomic number. So Caitlin, can you give us the symbol for tungsten? And Sally, can you find the atomic number for tungsten? W, capital W. Thank you, ma'am. And Sally, what's the atomic number for it? Seventy-four. Excellent. Thank you. That's seventy-four. Okay. Now the tungsten is going through a beta decay. So are we going to follow this element up with an arrow or a plus? What do you think, Caitlin? Nice. Good job. So it's decaying. It's getting uh, rid of. It's breaking down. Um, it is not accepting or capturing our beta. Oh, that's weird. There we go. Short. So it's a beta decay. So we can go ahead and put our beta, negative one, put my E, and now we need to figure out what it becomes. Okay. So Good job, guys. We've set up our problem. We have a pretty good understanding of what we're doing here. Now, we just need to do the math portion. So, Caitlin, what should we do first? Find the atomic mass. All right, let's go with atomic mass first. So, tell me what to do. Add 165 and Plus zero. 165 plus zero? So that arrow is always going to be our equal sign in these problems. So it's 165 equals zero plus, and I got the plus from right here. So what, what plus zero gives you 165? 165. Right. 165. So now we know the mass of our mysterious element. What's the next step? Oopsies. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing right now. Okay. What's our next step? 74 equals minus one. 74 equals minus one. Good job. So we have our 74. We use an equal instead of our arrow. So now that's an equals minus one plus something. So what plus minus one equals 74? 75. Excellent. Good job. So now we have the atomic number, which is 75. We have the atomic mass. So which one do I use to identify what element this is? Am I going to use the atomic number or the atomic mass? Excellent. Caitlin, you got all the right answers. Say it with some confidence. You got this. So we're going to take, the, take a look at the atomic number. We're looking at number 75. What symbol represents the element with the atomic number 75? R-E. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Avery. Do you agree, Caitlin? A, there we go, R, E. And now we have our answer. 
Good job, guys. So now all we got to do is we'll plug it into the, uh, the problem. So our problem asked us for, let's look at this again. It says, determine the mass number. So Uma, what's the mass number here? 165. Thank you, ma'am. 165. The atomic number, Avery, what's the atomic number here? 75. Excellent, thank you. And Sally, it also asks us for the symbol. What is the symbol here? 475. Yes, for our solution, ma'am. R E. Wait, no. Wait. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep, you're right. <laughs> Caitlin, thank you for leading this. Excellent job. We got the correct answer. Everything is filled out. Every all the math looks like it makes sense. Uh, does anyone have any questions on this problem? I think we have just enough time to knock out one more problem. If you guys will stick with me, just stay with me. One more problem. All right, so here's our little post-it so we can write down our problem. Put it right there and let's grab it from our QC. Copy, paste, and it says determine the mass number. It asks us to also determine the atomic number. And it also wants the symbol of the element that's formed during an alpha decay of bismuth 192. Okay, well the first thing, first things first, uh, Caitlin, what is the mass of bismuth here? 192. Excellent. So we have a mass of 192. We need to find uh, the symbol and the atomic number for bismuth. Ooh, that's a unique one. I don't think I've used that one before. So I'll help out on this one. Uh, bismuth. <gasps> no! Okay. The atomic number is 83. Uh, symbol BI. It's an alpha decay, so it's 4, 2, HE. We have 192 equals 4 uh, plus something, so that's 180. So this is 188, and we have 83 equals 2 plus something, so that's 81. So what has the atomic number 81? TL. TL. No. TL. Uh, is it TL or TI? I think it might be TI. Was it TI? It's, it looks like TL. <laughs> Might be right. TL. All right. All right, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.